In this video, we're going over the very first Buster official release that just happened from Debian. And if you don't know already, Debian is like the granddaddy to all the Linux distros, especially like Ubuntu, Linux Mint, all these things would be nothing without Debian. And to see them release a new version today uh, is pretty awesome. By the time you watch this video, it might be a day or two old since it's released, but uh, it's still such an incredible milestone. And I absolutely love the bust release. As many know, I've been running Debian for the past six months, and I've always said it's boring, but I mean that in the best way possible. It is just so stable and reliable, meaning I never am surprised by this system. The only surprise I ever get when it comes to Debian is that I didn't break it. Heck, just the other night on a stream, I was in the middle of an APT upgrade and I accidentally uh, quit out of my console right during the actual upgrade. And I was like, well, I guess there goes that upgrade. <laughs> And I just let it go for about another five, 10 minutes. And then I went ahead and gave my computer a hard reboot. Sure enough, Debian came right back up. And the only thing I needed to do from this stream to actually clean the packages, uh, which is uh, DPKG, and then I think it was like dash dash auto clean or something like that. And then it just cleaned out any of the packages that got messed up from the hard boot. But the system booted just fine. That's how stable Debian is. So stable, you get bored of not having problems. That's amazing. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump on the desktop and do a sample run through as far as an install on Debian. I'm going to pick my favorite spin, KDE, for this because everyone knows I love KDE operating as far as a desktop environment. So uh, I'm going to show you exactly the ISOs I pick and then we're gonna go from there. Now it's been a couple years since the last Debian release. It was version nine stretch and that came out in 2017. Buster just officially got released today and Buster is the most recent Debian stable, which is incredible. So let's download this. We're gonna to go to getting Debian. The download process for Debian is really wonky how they put stuff out. Now you can just download the official version but it doesn't come with any like proprietary drivers and also uh, none non-free repositories, which is kind of bad because most people need those things. So I'm gonna show you how to get those from the official Debian website. That way you're not hunting around for it. So go to try Debian live before installing. From here, we're gonna go ahead and put AMD 6400 DVD USB. And then from this site, you need to click on this link right here. Look under images, unofficial, non-free images, including firmware to get this. And now we finally get to this page. We can go 10-live plus non-free and then AMD64 again and then ISO hybrid. Uh, the BT just stands for BitTorrent. So if you want to torrent it, you absolutely can. So from this page, you can come down to the ISO. Now, if you're like GNOME or you like Cinnamon, you like Mate, whatever it may be, or XFCE, you can go ahead and click your version of preference and you get the non-free, which is all that nice bundled software that most people need for a functional thing or most Ubuntu users are used to. So what I like is obviously KDE's my desktop environment of choice, but definitely pick yours. You can still follow along with this install. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the KDE non-free ISO and get all that nice bundled software and be able to install it uh, with all those nice repositories built in. Okay, on initial boot, after using that ISO, either to burn on a DVD or if you burn it onto a USB stick, uh, you can actually power your computer with that and you'll come to this screen. So this is the live portion of it, or we can do the graphical installer. For today's video, we're gonna do the graphical installer instead of booting directly in. If you just wanna try it, you can go up to the live and actually try Debian first. Um, however, that's just the stock experience. So let's go ahead and install it on this computer. So we'll select our language, continue, US, English, and that's just the language and keyboard layout. Choose if you're a different language, uh, something other than the defaults that I just chose. Now we just choose our host name. I leave domain name blank. 
So this part says set a root password. This is kind of a confusing part of a Debian install. Leave this blank because what happens is it promotes your user that you're going to create to have pseudo privileges, meaning you'll type in your username and password to elevate into root privileges. Uh, by default, that user will, won't have all access root privileges, but when you type in the password, let's say you do sudo space apt install and you're installing a package, uh, you'll then be prompted for your user's password, which is technically the root password at the time. But right here, we don't need to create a root actual account or a root password. It'll just disable this portion of it and use our username password, much like Ubuntu does this by default. It's just worded kind of weird. So uh, just leave this blank. And then we'll go ahead and set our name for our user and then our password. Set our clock. Now we can do some stuff here as far as partitioning the disk. However, I'm just gonna use the entire disk for this tutorial and it'll just auto partition it all for me. So we're using guided, we're using all of the disk and it's gonna go ahead and create one volume to store everything. And that's why I just hit continue, continue, continue. And now we're just gonna finish and write these changes. We'll say yes to write changes to disk. And now it's gonna go through the install process. In this part, I'm gonna speed up probably about 2,000%. Okay, and now it says a network mirror can be used to supplement the software included. You may also make newer versions of the software available. Do you wanna do this? You always wanna hit yes. Go ahead and say your country of origin and then select which archive mirror you want to mirror. I usually just leave this as default and I don't use a proxy and then it finishes installing the rest of this and configuring APT which is our package manager that is also used on Ubuntu and many many other distributions. Now the installer is just doing our bootloader this ensures that it actually boots into our Debian installation. And it says, do you want to install it in the master boot record? Always click yes to this to finish uh, installing Grub on the hard disk. And you'll select which device to install Grub on. Obviously, this is the hard disk that is utilizing your Debian installation. Okay, now that our installation is complete, we will remove our installation media, reboot, and we should see the KDE setup uh, as far as the actual desktop environment and be booted on there. So I'm going to go ahead, reboot. I'll speed the reboot process up a little bit and see you guys back on the desktop. Okay, this is our default screen. A little bit ugly as to be expected. Okay, and now we have the default KDE desktop. There's still a lot of setup to do. Um, some big things I like to do with KDE, I definitely recommend watching um, my KDE customization video. But the first thing I like to do is go to alternatives and get more of a traditional, like a start menu type of deal. So when you click on this, it'll kind of categorize things a little bit better. And I like the little favorites menu on the side here. And then you can kind of go through, pick and choose what you like. You have just your basic packages here. Uh, I don't personally like Firefox, so I go ahead and uninstall that. I also uninstall the Discover Store, which I'm not a big fan of either from KDE. So to kind of strip some of this out. Um, but other than that, everything else in here is a really good uh, basis to start your adventure in. Now, a couple things I will mention. That start screen is kind of ugly. So go into your settings. And then from your settings, you can actually go ahead and change a lot of the theming. Uh, and I go into that in my customization video as well. But do like a more darker theme. I like Arch Dark is my favorite theme. And then also like uh, the actual prompt screen, the login screen. So if you look here on the login screen, you can actually change it from uh, the startup shutdown portion. Um, we can go ahead and get a new theme. And I like to just sort by most downloads 
and then just you can install whichever one you like the most. Uh, this top one is actually pretty slick. So let's go ahead and install a theme here and also install a theme on that. Now, you notice how we didn't put a root password, but it's still requiring me to authenticate. This is how Ubuntu set up, and that's how you would set up the same thing in Debian to where you don't actually have a root account that you'd log into. So we'll, we'll put our password in, this will install, and then from there we can choose this theme. Now this is just a startup sc screen and this is just kind of makes it look beautiful. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. Save the settings. And then let's go ahead and change from this real bright white, which I'm not a big fan of. We'll just go to workspace theme and then we'll get new looks down here in the bottom right. And I like Arch KDE, this top one right here. All right, with that in, we'll click on this and hit apply. Now, if you're doing a full system theme like this, I like to reboot afterwards or at least log out and log back in just to get that refresh. Um, so it gives it that nice aesthetic. Now let's go ahead, one last thing, probably change the desktop uh, from this default uh, look. I like to get something a little more pretty. So this is a nice little Debian wallpaper that comes baked in. Uh, I like this right here. This right here is a, a good feel for a new user just using this. If you really want to go more into depth like hotkeys and other things, definitely check out my KDE customization video. Uh, but from here, let's go ahead and reboot and look at the final product. Okay, so here is our new login screen. We'll go ahead and sign in. You see how much better it looks from that default one we were looking at. Uh, so we'll go ahead and type our password in, log in. And there we have it. So this is a basic KDE install on Debian Buster. Very, very reliable. I really dig this portion of it. Um, definitely check this out. If you're looking for something new, getting rid of Ubuntu, this is a really good setup. So uh, have fun with this, definitely tinker. There's still a lot of things to do when it comes to Debian where you're constantly need to come in here and still update certain things and install other programs that you may or may not be missing. So this gives you the ability to build that perfect Linux installation to where everything that you want in here is in here with none of that extra junk or bloat. So there you have it. That is the vanilla Debian install using a Kitty uh, desktop environment. Very minimal, very, very good. I absolutely love this install. I've been running this specific one for six months. Now I'm not on the official Buster release, I went ahead and changed all my repos to be developer. So I'm on SID, which basically gives me the latest, greatest, almost like a rolling release, um, but it obviously can break some stuff. I honestly haven't had any issues in six months, but um, I definitely don't recommend that. If you really, if this is a production machine or something that you value your data, uh, I would continue just running the stable Buster release or maybe even testing if you really wanted to go that far. But to go all the way to Sid is a bit extreme. I just wanted to see if things break and uh, they haven't in literally over half a year. But that's going to do it for this video. A big shout out to my patrons. Without you, I wouldn't be able to make this video. Uh, also, a uh, Special shout out to Donald. Thank you for mentioning that Buster officially got released. Uh, I've extremely enjoyed my time on Debian and all the suggestions the community has given me. And to say that Buster is probably going to be the best, most staple release out there. I think I can officially say that without a doubt. So if you're interested in that, definitely check this out. But with that, I'll see you on the next one.